Welcome to Indoor Hydroponics. I'm John, your Indoor Hydroponic Test Dummy. It's mid-February, or in Michigan we like to call spring, but not really. It's still winter. Nonetheless, it's 55 or degrees out or warmer, which is pretty frickin' incredible for Michigan. The tulips aren't up, the crocuses aren't up, the daffodils aren't up, nor have the star strawberries began to grow. So we're going to do a few little things here with these. We're gonna grow them under some cheap lights, and we're gonna do a little bit of a dirt grow, we're gonna do a little bit of a hydroponic grow, and I've learned from my past experience that you as my viewers are not happy that I don't bring you from start all the way to finish. It's my goal here to bring you to finish and to show you some production. We're also gonna introduce a little bit of silica into our grow because the dope heads seem to think that that is a miracle additive when it comes to plant growth and cellular, cellular growth and uh, plant health. So we're gonna experiment with some silica both hydroponically and in dirt. And we're gonna test them against some controls to see if it does make a difference with plant growth and production. So sit back, grab a cup of coffee, and let's plant some of these Ozark Beauty strawberries. Hydroponics is what you make of it. When you think about it, and you think about traditional hydroponics, you're thinking of a straight water culture, whether it be a deep water culture, a recirculating system, or a cracky method. Um, but what a lot of people don't really view as hydroponics is when you're growing in a different type of media, more of a solid type media, either it be, you know, core or it's a peat-based type product. Um, so I have not really grown strawberries inside in a solid type media. So that's why I kind of want to go that route this year, at least with a few plants. And uh, we will do a couple of other plants in just a pure based water culture with, you know, some nutrients and things of that nature. But if any time you are controlling the intake of nutrients to the plant as well as a lighting schedule, heating schedule, humidity schedule, something along those lines. As long as you're controlling those types of things on an indoor type grow, you are technically growing hydroponically and that's what we're going to be doing here, at least with these six plants. And so I'm going to use a commercial based uh, potting mix that's primarily peat based. Okay, so that's going to be what we're going to grow in. I mean any good potting soil that's got peat or core or something like that in it is perfectly acceptable. Uh, it's kind of low on the compost because we're growing inside. Don't necessarily want to go that route with growing uh, composted material inside. So uh, something a little bit cleaner than just your atypical compost I think is what we're going to do. We're going to put them under some lights uh, and we're going to obviously run some experiments on these six plants probably three uh, experiments and three control groups to cross-reference against and we'll see what happens here uh, with regard to plant growth size and production so let me get these things filled up and then we're going to do some planting get them inside get them going um, and what will be interesting is to see their growth rate versus something grown in, grown in a pure water-based culture uh, water-based cultures are clean uh, in other words, you know, you don't got to worry about insects and bugs and things of that nature. Most of the time, um, you don't have to worry about soil-borne contaminants and funguses and bacteria for the most part. Uh, but, you know, traditionally in the past, like I said, I've been growing just in a water-based culture. And you get super fast root growth, super fast plant growth and even to the point where it's detrimental to the plant i think it's growing too fast i mean uh, most ever bearing type plants regardless of the variety will just put out runners and runners and runners and the maintenance on those runners is just insane so we're going to go this route and i think we're going to it's going to take a little bit longer to grow the plant out but hopefully get a little bit less with regards to the maintenance piece of it so again let me get started. All right. 
let's see what we got in here what kind of quality plant at least from a grocery store type strawberry plant that's actually pretty cool we've already got some green growth going wow this is uh you know for something sitting at a grocery store in a box this doesn't look all that bad I mean we've got a good jump start with regard to these things all right, rubber band together grown in this media here. Separate them and get to planting. All right, I got six bare root strawberries planted out in one gallon pots. The only thing that I've done here is obviously I've planted them with the crown uh, above the surface uh, because you don't want crown rot, okay? So always plant strawberries with the crown above the surface. Uh, they have not been watered yet. I will get to that momentarily. I did add some azomite into this potting mix. Uh, azomite, better known as rock dust, uh, is good. Uh, do I think it'll make a huge difference? Probably not. Do I think it'll take it up? I hope so. Uh, if the plants take it up, that just means that you have uh, a higher, uh, in theory, a higher mineral content in your produce, So, which is good for you. And... Um, also, it, it does provide uh, better flavor and things of that nature, or at least that's the theory anyway. So, got some of that going on, got a couple of extra little roots going on there. Uh, did trim up the roots just a touch, cleaned off all of the dead uh, foliage and uh, some of the dead stems from uh, the year prior. Just cleaned up the plants a little bit, basically, and uh, now we're ready to give them their first watering and get these guys going. All right, we're losing daylight fast, but nonetheless, all six pots have been set up equally. They've all been watered for their first water until they've been completely saturated, and they are draining out the bottom of the containers. Now we can start adding our three separate amendments. So three plants will be grown separately, just regular, the other three will have some form of amendment in there for testing. All right, Mike O'Reilly, that is cute. It's all about the roots, okay? And it's granular form of mycorrhiza, okay? So it's got a ton of mycorrhiza built into it. It's been put in uh, a format of one gallon, uh, two teaspoons per of mycorrhizae, and I actually put it right up near the roots of the plant, okay? And so that, what mycorrhiza does is it bonds to the roots of the plants and helps the plant take up nutrients and water more efficiently, okay? So it's kind of a, it's kind of a nature's uh, organic way of um, kind of a symbiotic relationship between plant soil and nutrient uptake. So we're gonna use this and track it against a control plant. So, OR for O-Risey. This plant, we're going to inoculate, if you will, or feed with silica, okay? And this is going to be good for the plant increase of cell structure and uh, it's a sample, okay, so that I got. So this is really, really super good stuff. And you put it in at a rate of, uh, during veg state or general purpose, five milliliters per gallon. So uh, that's about the rate of which I put it in at, uh, out of this little cup. So kind of scale it back to whatever amount of liquid you're putting in there. And so we're gonna see if that produces any kind of significant difference in growth rate pattern production and we're gonna do that every time I water I'm going to feed it with silica okay and then lastly we're gonna throw some humic acid liquid humic acid which is another organic type of feed okay and we'll get more into the humic acid later but the brand that I'm using is mad farmer and it's the nuts 
okay? And that's just strictly humic acid, another organic amendment. And uh, again, this is uh, 5 to 15 milliliters per gallon um, for cocoa or soil. So I kind of scaled it back a little bit for the amount of water that I put in. So not trying to overfeed, not trying to underfeed, just going at the proper direction. So uh, let's put our little silica thing in here. Now the dope growers are seeing significantly higher yields using silica and humic acid. So I can't understand why it wouldn't have some sort of difference with growing plants, vegetables, things of that nature. We should be able to see some differences against some control plants using these amendments to the soil. So again, mycorrhiza, we've got silica, and then we've got humic acid against three control plants that have just basically water, soil, a little bit of fertilizer, and all six of them have uh, azomite in them. So let's get these under some lights, get them growing, and uh, track the growth rate of all six of these plants indoors. All right, here's all six of our plants. Three controls, three experiments going on. All right, they are going to be grown on this table. They have a little bit of aluminum foil underneath it to help reflect some of the light back up. All right, uh, they are going to be grown under this high pressure sodium ball, a couple feet up. I'm gonna start them off at 12 hours. Don't wanna burn them out. Don't wanna get them too um, I, in other words, I just don't want to blast them at 18 hours just quite yet, okay? I'm going to slowly bring the time up on these gradually until we get to 18 hours on, which will mimic a full uh, summer light pattern. And then we'll probably start stringing them back as soon as we got good flower production and they start to put on some fruit. So, guys, come back in about 30 days. Um, I'm not going to feed them any type of hydroponic fertilizer at this point. There is a little bit of fertilizer in each one of these that came with the potting soil. So I think we're going to be okay. Strawberries aren't very big eaters, okay? They're not heavy eaters. So you don't definitely do not want to over fertilize strawberries, all right? In fact, you want to cut back on the fertilizer come bloom uh, and when they go into production. Otherwise, you get small berries and very little production. So you want to kind of force them into making some nice berries then you pick them and then they restart the process of ever growing okay so guys come back in about 30 days let's check the process uh, the progress on these see if any of the amendments that i will be continually adding per watering uh, have any difference so that we know going into the future if we want to add certain amendments to our outdoor soil outdoor grow or if they make a difference on our indoor grow okay so guys uh as always thanks for tuning in here on indoor hydroponics let's check these six plants out again in 30 days in the meantime let's just let them grow guys take care bye